Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. President Muhammadu Buhari signs eight bills earlier passed by the National Assembly into law, including an act seeking to establish a center to address the needs of the elderly. Police in Plateau State confirmed killing of at least three persons by a suspected herdsman in Jebu Nyango community of Basa, local government area. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tukur Burutai solicits increased funding for Nigeria's armed forces to effectively tackle insurgency as he visits his South African counterpart. And a massive fire at a hospital in the southeastern city of Minyang in South Korea kills at least 37 people. And just a reminder that for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website, channelstv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. And log on to m.channelstv.com to watch us on your mobile device or download the Channels TV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. The Channels TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have access to the eyewitness feature with which you can share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. Let's take a look at some of the pictures that you sent in to us. Starting off with this one from Maburu in Ogun State showing this place which our eyewitness reporter says was used to be an illegal dump site but has now been cleared by the state government. Our eyewitness reporter appreciates Channel's television for calling the attention of the state government to this issue. Still on pollution is this picture from Iguruta Road in Port Harcourt, the river state capital, showing a site which, according to our eyewitness reporter, could cause an epidemic. He says many residents have had to be admitted into hospital as a result of the stench that comes from here, and he wants it cleared. And finally, we have this image from Basa local government area of Kogi State. Our eyewitness reporter says that residents use this as a makeshift bridge, but vehicles are unable to use it, and he wants the government to come to their aid quickly. Thanks a lot for all your pictures, and do keep them coming. After months of debate on what structure Nigeria should adopt to fix its many challenges, the ruling All Progressives Congress has finally come up with a blueprint. Its Committee on Restructuring presented a report to the national chairman of the party, John Uyugun, on what the party prefers to call its stance on true federalism. The chairman of the party said the report will go through the mill, but promises it will be considered in good time. Our next report examines the different sides of the restructuring debate. The last two years has seen the debate on restructuring go loud and almost impossible to ignore, with some calling on the center to shed some powers to the federating unit. To some Nigerians, the federal system is more unitary than federal and not taking care of the existing realities. Since the various amalgamations that created the entity that we now call Nigeria, different segments of Nigeria's population have at different times and sometimes at the same time express feelings of marginalization, of being shortchanged. That is a summary of the restructuring by one of those leading the debate. But the restructuring idea is not the same for everyone. Those leading the debate are basically calling for political, constitutional and fiscal reforms. That's on paper, in operation, true federalism, devolution of powers, resource control, regionalism, self-determination have come up more often in the debate, but this is not the only major disagreement. Some members of the ruling APC believe the proponents have ulterior motives. There are about three schools calling for restructuring. Mm -hmm. There are those that are just political opportunists. Okay. There are people that when in power did not believe in restructuring when they were at the federal government but have now moved out and are calling uh, for restructuring. The party said it is not discarding the idea but would go with what they think would work. I know what the APC means by restructuring. It's true federalism. is there in the manifesto. And I have said repeatedly and I want to repeat it again. The APC stands by its commitment on true federalism. No question about that. As the debate reached a climax, 
The APC set up a committee in August 2017. After months of their research, the committee said they engaged 1,014 people in the process and that Nigerians indicated interest in 24 issues. And out of those issues, the committee made recommendation on 13 in its report. For this, we've also moved to the concurrent list. We felt that we should propose a bill yes, that I can allows just... state to match. Restructuring can may hear not you. be a one-size-fits-all approach to the Nigerian numerous challenges, but are the APC's recommendations on true federalism true to the yearnings and agitations of those who feel shortchanged by the current political structure, or is it just a small screen? Now let's talk a bit more about the restructuring debate and the APC's recommendations. I'm now being joined on the news at 10 by the Executive Director, Partners for Electoral Reform, Mr. Izengwa Wangu from Abuja. Thanks a lot for joining us on the news at 10. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. If you look at the committee's mandate, they were supposed to distill the true intent and the definition of true federalism. Let's put it that way, as promised in their campaign as well. How would you describe their attempts to define restructuring or true federalism as they've put it well I, my, my sense is that um, the, the conversation and eventually what came out from the report uh, seems to have been lifted verbatim from the 2014 uh, confab report uh, and for me my worry is that a, a, a party that has majority uh, in the National Assembly have no business setting up committees to do what majority of Nigerians are already determined that that is one way that uh, we could uh, make life a little much more bearable for majority of the citizens. And what are those things? The recommendations that they made is take some things out of the exclusive list and um, put them in the correct list so that both the state and the federal can, uh, can, can respond to those issues. And what are those? Uh, they talked about mining, they talked about labor issues, uh, they talked about um, uh, uh, issues around drugs, narcotic, psychedelic, um, psychedelic drugs and all of that. Uh, just, just those before... don't require, a, it, it doesn't require a panel to sit to be able to do that. We thought that we have a national assembly that has responsibility to make law for the good governance of the country. Ordinarily, that is what this constitutional amendment uh, process, the endless constitutional amendment process that we have had, should be dealing with. It should be able to do that without getting any, especially when they have majority in the parliament. Well, sorry, let me just, let me just, um, this let me is just also ask contained you. Sorry, if I, can just, yes. if I could just ask you briefly before you go on. Um, you're, you're alleging that this is something that you think was lifted from the 2014 um, um, reports, uh, the Comfab report. But if you look through uh, some of the recommendations they have there, they did state that they had gone through a number of um, reports, a number of recommendations to come up with what they have now. So they said they looked through different reports and considerations and they've done some more research and that's why you see what you see now. So are you still insisting that there's well, nothing the, new the, about the what outcome of the uh... The outcome of their research did not uh, bring anything novel other than what is commonplace and what is already in the marketplace. But let's not dwell essentially on whether they were taken from uh, other reports or not. What is important is that these are recommendations that are already on ground. But uh, we need to take this a little a notch higher and say, for instance, um, what is it that we cannot legislate for the poor? legislate mm -hmm. for the majority of Nigerian citizens who have no tribal marks. The chapter two of our constitution restructures the country. If it were the only thing that we have as our constitution, where it talks about government, the, the, it's responsibility of the state to abolish all corrupt practices, where it talks about it is responsibility of the government to provide for security and welfare of citizens, where it talks about uh, the educational, uh, this thing where it talks about providing free 
and a compulsory education from university, from uh, primary school to university. What happened is that in the, that chapter two, they said when practicable. All that you need to lift some of these issues is to just take out that when practicable. My sense is that we like to waste our time so much. The, Pallium, the National Assembly has responsibility to make these laws, factor some of these things that are already in those reports, and infuse them into the constitutional amendment process that we have, and then some of these heat will just go off. All right, Executive Director, Partners for Electoral Reforms, is in Wangu. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with us on the News at 10 tonight. Is the budget for defense adequate? Well, according to the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukul Buratai, Nigeria's armed forces need more funding in order to maintain the required capability. He was speaking on the nation's security challenges in South Africa, where he's visiting at the instance of the country's army chief. Both countries' committee members have been exchanging visits in line with their military cooperation agreements entered into in 2016. Our South Africa Bureau Chief Betty Dibia reports. Nigeria's Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Chukud Puratai, says his army is in full control as regards the war against insurgency, despite the strain brought by other security challenges in other parts of the country. The challenges are all over, including the, the, the Niger Delta, you know, but we are all deployed there to ensure we maintain the requisite security and, uh, you know, stability that is required. And uh, especially in the uh, North Central. The general admits that stories of the presence of Islamic State fighters in North Central Nigeria are not far from the truth, given recent developments and arrests in the area. He also says resolving the herdsmen farmers' clashes requires leadership, understanding, and dialogue as criminal elements have entered the fray. It requires uh, leadership at all levels, not necessarily at the national or the state level, even at the local and government uh, community levels. We need to uh, really appreciate and take everybody together. The most of those that are involved, you know, are really the criminal elements, and which must be addressed uh, accordingly. Um, they must be identified and they must be separated from uh, the law-abiding uh, hardsmen. On the one billion dollars approved by government for the fight against insurgency, he says priority areas are mainly operational. Just like a drop in the ocean. Uh, much, much more funding if we have to uh, maintain uh, the required capability of the armed forces, not only the army. Lieutenant General Buratai is in South Africa on the invitation of his South African counterpart, Lieutenant General Lindy Leyan. Issues of continued cooperation have been discussed, and he has also visited other military chiefs as well as Niger's High Commission in Pretoria. From Pretoria, South Africa's capital, Betty Dibia, Channel's Television News. And back here in Nigeria, Governor Yahya Bello of Kogi State has asked the federal government to establish more centers involved in curbing crimes associated with drug abuse. The governor made this request in Lokoja, the state capital, during the commissioning of the Rehabilitation Center for Drug Addicts in the state. The wife of the Kogi State Governor has established a rehabilitation and resource center as part of efforts to fight drug abuse and, and other social vices. The chairperson of the Northern Governor's Wise Forum, representing the wife of the president, Mrs. Hadiza Mohammed, royal fathers, government functionaries, amongst others, are here to commission the project. <laughs> Governor Yahya Bello arrives and they proceed to cutting the tape, signifying the opening of the rehabilitation center for use. The state's NDLEA commander educates and assures the people that the agency will not rest until drug abuse is reduced to the barest minimum. It is my hope that this awakening by the wife of the Kogi State Governor and the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development will be sustained, that this you know, rehabilitation center we are going to sustain it. Governor Bellows believes that all disturbed youth should be rehabilitated. He also advised politicians in the country to free their minds of corruption. You have to rehabilitate those paid 
politicians. As much as we are rehabilitating or the rehabilitating the drug pushers and those that have abused drugs, these other men of yesterday have abused power and they need help. They need to be rehabilitated. There are many who believe that centers like this across the country, if properly funded and sustained, will help to reduce crime and vices in our society. When the news at 10 returns, professional service firm Duarte & Tush pledges to continue using its platform to get policymakers to provide updates on the nation's economic direction. Do join us again.